Welcome to the Neo Jochuan Podcast. My name is Isaac Kamins. This is a bi-weekly podcast where my friend Jess O'Brien and I discuss internal martial arts, qigong, and meditation. Uh, welcome to our third season of the Neo Jochuan Podcast. Uh, this season we are going to be looking primarily at the art of Tai Chi Chuan. We'll be looking at the Tai Chi classics um, from Baiwa's book. This is uh, the book that was written by Bruce's teacher, Baiwa, in, uh, I think it came out in 2001. Um, and it, in the Patreon, we're going to cover the Nagong portion of the book, um, as well as the bio and stuff about Baiwa that's not in the book. Um, so that's going to be um, kind of how we go forward. So there's going to be a regular episode on the Tai Chi Classics and then a Patreon episode on the Nagong. And this week we're releasing an interview that Jess did when he was in Colorado back in July with Bruce. Uh, they talk about the sort of forming of energy gates and Bruce's training and sort of the history of the whole thing. Uh, so you're definitely going to want to check that out. Um, that's going to be on the Patreon today. Uh, we have another interview we did with Bruce uh, that will be out later in the season that kind of goes along with the material that we're talking about in the Patreon. So that one will come out in a couple of months or so. Uh, we also have some interviews with uh, some senior students, uh, some friends of ours um, coming up. So those will be available soon as well. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for your support. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, looking forward to the season three. So thanks again. Uh, take care of yourselves and enjoy the episode. Welcome to Neja Chuan Podcast with Isaac and Jess. We're ready to start season three, talking about one of our favorite martial arts, Tai Chi Chuan. Hi, Isaac. How's it going? Doing well, Jess. How about you? <laughs> oh, excellent. Glad to get back on the microphone and yeah. uh, into Chinese martial arts. So I thought we'd, you know, we haven't talked a lot about Tai Chi over the last two seasons because um, we wanted to focus on Xing Yi and Bagua. But uh, I think for both of us, Tai Chi has been a big part of our journey in Chinese martial arts and very i i owe a lot of what i know and do to tai chi so i i'm looking forward to digging into it a little further and i thought one great place to start would be uh when we first met up which was a pretty tai chi focused environment at the time yeah it was a, wasn't it a tai chi applications workshop or something right so it, it you and i first met in 1999 at the the uh internal martial arts fighting applications workshop and uh, I had just moved to the Bay and I innocently saw this posted somewhere in a you know magazine or whatever. And I'm like, internal martial arts fighting applications. This is just what I've been looking for. And uh, having read The Power of Internal Martial Arts recently, I was pumped uh, to do some hand to hand training. I guess my experience up until that point of the Tai Chi I had learned was cool and all, but there never were any applications like my previous teachers hadn't really taught much they weren't like experienced in fighting or sparring and so they didn't really have much to offer on that level so when i saw the chance i figured oh this guy you know bk francis his book's all about the combat so i want to get in on this so i was really excited to check out what he had to teach so in berkeley it was a weekend and i got to meet you and a whole bunch of other folks that i know even to this day that were uh deeply involved in the energy arts training and he went through a plethora of fighting applications at that thing. There were some, uh, you know, it was definitely everything it was advertised to be. We went through a bunch of the form and um, we were whipping some butt in there. Yeah, I don't remember too much about what we did in that workshop, to be honest. I, I <laughs> you know, at that point, I think I'd been, you know, doing the long form for a few years and you know, the way he taught the form was basically you did the move and then you did the applications. Um, so I was actually hoping that that workshop was going to be more about Xing Yi and Bagua. But when we got there, it ended up mostly being Tai Chi applications because most yeah. people there did Tai Chi. So right. it just kind of was easier for him to uh, do that. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah, no, he, he covered some of his classic favorite stuff. And like you said, like his weekly classes would often teach each move of Tai Chi one by one, along with the applications for each one. So you'd work your way through that or long form or the short form, depending on what he was teaching. 
And each step of the way, you'd learn a bunch of applications for each one of the moves. So it was like, how would you say it was woven into the teachings of the class? Um, yeah, and I think this was, wasn't this right around the time the power of internal martial arts? Yeah, so I had yeah. just come out. So this right. this was the workshop that was supposed to kind of go with the book. And uh, so that's why I was so stoked. And I would definitely have my eyes open to, to some of the, those combat principles and techniques that I, you know, I'd learned some and I'd learned some push hands, but you know, he, he always likes to make it pretty darn real when it comes to the applications. So I was, I was highly impressed. And, you know, like when it comes to Tai Chi, it's, it's sort of a weird martial art because it's done very slow and it's done really soft and it, it really emphasizes some counterintuitive principles of yielding, um, sensitivity, things like that. You know, most martial arts, you start off doing push-ups and punching a bag and hitting things really hard so that you can get your strength up. But Tai Chi takes that opposite approach. And I've always found that fascinating. I always figure like there's something about that that attracts me and makes me think I, I kind of want to do it the hard way or whatever. You know, I want to like I want to do it the counterintuitive way because I feel like just making myself stronger is not quite enough. I want I want that advantage that comes from energetic training and awareness training that Tai Chi offers. Yeah, I mean, I came at it, I think, similar perspective of like <clears throat> didn't want to just bash on things but you know I, my first exposure to it was you know I, I came into this stuff kind of like mostly interested in bagua because that was the thing that I'd seen that was like oh that's really cool but then I got there and just did qigong and it was like well I guess I'm going to be doing this for a while because this is hard and like if this is what you have to do to be able mm -hmm. to do martial arts like I'm nowhere near ready to do that so by the time I started doing anything like Tai Chi, Xingyi, or Bagua, I'd already been doing the Neigong, the energy gates, and a little mm. bit of other stuff for almost two years, mm. so, I think. So um, by, you know, the time I was learning, you know, anything that looked like a form, I already kind of knew how to do most of the um get tai chi or get more chi in your tai chi stuff that he would teach mm. so by the time he was teaching applications it was like i had already started doing xing yi for a few years so i kind of had that reference point um interesting and I, and I think when he was doing the the seminar it was more generic tai chi it wasn't like this is the wu style applications mm -hmm. it was like you know here's a here's a way you use ward off or here's a way yeah. you use rollback um, and he would do, you know, five or six different, mostly what I remember about that weekend is just getting the shit kicked out of me. <laughs> well, you were the, de you were the demo dummy for most of that class. So yeah, he, yeah, he kind of went off. And somewhere in the middle of the, or no, end of the first day, he cracked one of my ribs. Oh, was that the one? So oh. yeah, so I was a little bit. I remember that actually. No. That was a, that was a memorable experience, you know. I remember you being stretched up on your tippy toes, like somehow in some weird yeah, it was, joint lock or something, and then bam! It was an application for a single whip, and he kind of lifted me up and slammed me on my back eight or nine times. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was just you know one of it wasn't the softest floor in there. It no. was a no concrete floor with a uh, oh, carpet car on carpet top. on top. It was like oh man um yeah so that that's my main memory of that and then you know you coming up to me shortly after that trying to talk to me and be like ah oh, fuck who is this guy like <laughs> yeah i'm just like well yeah i kept asking about you know bagua and stuff because i'd heard about rosho and i had seen maybe a video of him doing it or something by that point so i was asking around and now everyone kept telling me to find this guy isaac and and then I finally came wandering over and got the Isaac reception of just like, what do you want? Who the hell are you? Yeah. So well, that was uh that was the start of a great friendship. Yeah. <laughs> just as a as a sort of side note, it's it's kind of important to think about you know, this is 20 some odd years ago, and this is before the big MMA craze. And yeah, just kind of starting, yeah. People were still kind of going, you know, what is Tai Chi? Can it be used as a martial art? And really, there were only, you know, a handful of people doing martial Tai Chi. I mean, there was William Chen in New York has probably been the, you know, 
the longest running guy that did that, you know, um, and then Bruce and a couple other people. So it wasn't like, you know, you could go find a lot of good fighters who did Tai Chi. There was, you know, a couple of them and that was it. Uh, a couple in Europe, you know, and it was like, so uh, it wasn't like now where every single person that teaches Tai Chi is trying to show you that it's a martial art somehow, you know, they're like, that they're all. Well, I don't know if that's exactly how it is now either. Well, <laughs> but, but, you know, there's a, there's much At least there are than, some people you could find who, who do it as a martial yeah, art. That, yeah, I mean, they, they, they try to present it as both. I mean, whether or not they're successful, you know, it's like, even the people who don't will say that, you know, Oh, other people do it as right. A effect. My teacher, at least that's known that that Tai Chi is a martial art. That right. Is I mean, it, and it's sort of like um, there isn't the kind of yeah. I don't know. I mean, so like when I was like I said, when I was learning it, most of what I was learning was um, the way I think of it is it's like that's where you in Bruce's school that's where you learn how to do sort of traditional applications right like a mm. punch a kick a block block the punch cover it and punch back right, kind of right. Thing. so like so all of the basic martial arts stuff about you know like um just technique and and form and all of that was was kind of done through the long form so that you know you by the time you got to do bagua you had some sense of what you know like how a block you, is you know, a punch is a kick is you know just the super basic level because at that point he wasn't really teaching shingy and then you know it's at some point he started teaching shingy and it, yeah that sort of you know again it was a another place where he did that but the long form has always kind of been his um it's the flagship you know that's where he puts as much of his you know the basic stuff as you can do in one thing mm -hmm. And then Bagua is kind of taking it to the next level of right. you know, how do you really fight more than right? That. His Bagua applications are always off the assumption that you've got some sort of fighting skill already. Whereas his Tai Chi long form, you go step by step and you rigorously drill all the applications that go with it. So it's kind of his encyclopedia of fighting techniques are contained there as opposed to Xingyi and Bagua. You know, his, his Xingyi class is always heavy on power training and Bagua is always heavy on energy and awareness and stuff and the tai chi has those things too but the when it comes to you know a joint lock or a sweep or or a punch or whatever like he's going to go through those one by one on the tai chi teachings and then when it comes to shingi and bagua it just tends to be whatever comes up in that class he'll it's not as methodical in other words that's my impression well yeah there was definitely more of a um continuity from you know one well shingy had that too but but as far as just like you know you're learning a form so um it you know in general right shingy and tai chi, i mean shingy and bagua you'll be using one movement with many 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 applications tai chi is kind of more like a traditional you mm. know japanese or chinese martial art right where, it's like one move, one application, another mm -hmm. move, another application. So you're learning kind of variations on a theme rather than just how to do mm -hmm. the same thing with a different. Right. You know. I mean, the, the the way Bruce would teach it was kind of each movement was treated as, okay, this is a technique. And he would show all the ways that you could do that technique. And then, you know, you'd plug that into the form. So there's a lot of implied stuff because you you know mm -hmm. if you did it all it would, the form would be four hours long, mm -hmm. um, but most of it was a, a. I think the reason that he did it was it was a really good is a really good way of mem memorizing the form because if you know that like okay the reason my hand is here and it goes to the right is because I'm moving somebody's hand to the right. So I don't get punched in the face. There's context for what you're doing. It's mm. not just wave your arms around. Uh -huh. in the face. Well, yeah, you're right. Tai Chi kind of looks like you could be going from one opponent then to the next kind of like, it looks like it might be a fighting move. Whereas something like Bagua, you're spinning around, whipping your arms around. Yeah. You know, that's, it, it doesn't have that choreographed look to it. And like you said, single palm change might have, 
10,000 applications packed into it that you've got to sort of pull out one by one. Whereas Tai Chi, it's kind of obvious that you're hooking somebody's hand, stretching it out, putting on an arm bar. You can envision something happening there pretty clearly. And it's in slow motion, so at least you have the time to think about it. We're seeing you go at more normal speed, so you, you don't really have the time to like mentally envision anything while you're doing it necessarily. Yeah, and in, in Bruce's system, I mean, it's also because um, – you're trying to do a lot of it by using opening and closing and, and sort of this, so developing the ability to kind of substitute external actions with internal actions. You know, you you substitute tension with twisting. You start to the two, you know, pulling in contraction with the closing Mm. of your your joints, things like this. So you have us have kind of this, uh, it's like learning a new language kind of you, you mm. as you go through the form you're learning shapes and techniques and things and, and so you kind of get these modular components and and you know fighting is a ba- basically the ability to take those modular components and put them in any order and you know do different things with them and stuff so the the process of going through that is I think what really makes Tai Chi mm. kind of special is it's it's yeah. not it's not that you're learning techniques that nobody else has. Right. It's that the process of going through it in this methodical sort of you know with this awareness of what's happening on the inside of your body, it definitely makes it take longer to get good at it, but it also gives you a depth of knowledge that you don't get from just punching. And, mm. and, and kicking and I, you know it was one of those things i think it was in the when you, we were talking about mike bingo he, he he talked about you know there was something else that he was looking for i mean all these guys said the same thing you know they couldn't find it in karate or you know just beating the shit out of somebody but there was this like other thing that they were looking for and it was in tai chi you know mm-hmm. it was still hard to find people that were good at it even back then but um you know it was kind of known that these were the guys that you try to get to you know with if you want to figure out this internal power there's a subtlety there in tai chi that i think if you can capture it's there's a sense that if i could get what doing this really slow and smooth does that'll give me a bonus that i that it's really hard to find anywhere else yeah and it's a big if but that's kind of the gamble (laughs) right is to, to to work on it and hope that you can get there i mean i think one of the most sort of useful things that bruce said about tai chi at one point was you know tai chi uses soft internal power Mm. and in order to defeat someone else your soft internal power still has to be better than their external right hard power right right it's not an automatic easy way to win (laughs) it's not yeah it's not a guaranteed and um Teachers will frequently say something like, oh, if you do this technique, you know, if you do Tai Chi, then this will work. And yes, if you do it right at the right moment, you know, like everything's all the stars are aligned, it will work. But that is a big if, you know, and that it takes a lot more training to get to the point where you can use something like Tai Chi to really do combat with than it does to just kind of teach somebody, you know, if they put their hand here, you do this and you smack them, you Mm. know, that, that, that like you can learn to fight a lot quicker. Um, uh, and and it's not about, you know, again, it's not about like just getting to the point of being able to do smash and bash. It's about what you're doing to your mind and your body along the way. That's really the, I don't know the, the the special thing about Tai Chi is it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's like it develops you in a way. It's kind of like the um, uh, graduate school of internal martial arts, right? That it's you can do things on a more basic level. You can do Tai Chi on a basic level, but you can also go into it on this incredibly deep level to where it's like, you know, every movement is like a thesis on body mechanics you know what i mean uh bob tangora was a big influence on me as far as this went because he would sort of take one 
one like part of a move not even the whole move and he'd show me you know 10 different ways you could use that little part of a movement in push hands and it was like if that's one little piece of the movement and there's you know hundreds of those pieces it's like you're looking at a lot of ways things can go together so it's you know it has that thing that all Taoist arts have about you know developing layers upon layers upon layers even though the form doesn't you know change and you're just continuously moving through these you know the same sequence of movements every time you do it there's like a different thing that comes up you know well, it's, just, it's kind of a education in your own development of your body you know and the ability to concentrate throughout the length of a long form is something that's really underrated. If you can stay present and aware just on the most basic level without drifting off with your thoughts all the time, like it's a real mind above and beyond the body. The mind training there is, is something well worth uh, exploring. That was one of the things Tim Carmel said to me when I interviewed him that time way back was just like, you know, if you can stay present for an entire Tai Chi form, that puts your mind and body in a state of far beyond the you know 99% of people just the ability to concentrate that much is something that's worth worth finding and capturing and, and I mean, yeah i think you can argue that um you know the ability to stay present and relax is you know one of the most important things a human being can learn how to do Right, that will help you on every different level, from physical stuff yeah. to mental to spiritual to whatever. That that concentrative ability is huge. I mean, I always think of, for, since you mentioned your interviews, the Gabe one Gabriel Chin, I think was mm. the one talking about you know being in actual war and you know Tai Chi being the thing that kind of kept him able to saved like, his life. He said, "Yeah, deal with the 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 shit, you know." And, and right? that that piece about you know it, it doesn't. It isn't just about the fighting right. part because you can do that with a gun or, you know, a, a grenade, as Bruce yeah. used to say, you know, <laughs> grenade foo, right? Um, that th This is more about, you know, this other piece of it that, that your mind and your, your kind of conscious awareness of what's happening around you. Is totally. And I think all three internal martial arts teach that, right? Xing Yi's got a lot of that standing power. Bagua, you're circling until your mind calms down. But some about Tai Chi, man, that that long form is just grueling to stay alive and to stay awake and to concentrate on the changes of the moves. And Bagua, you might be able to space out a little while you're circling if you're just holding the posture, right? And Santi, the same. You could stand there for a while. But Tai Chi, you're constantly doing a new movement, so you can't space out completely. So it forces you to keep remembering and thinking, but at the same time trying to achieve that mental state. And again, that's good training. Yeah, I mean, you'll get different opinions about which one's more difficult, right? Like mm -hmm. some people will say that, you know, Bagua, like Bruce tends to go with the the theory that Bagua is the most difficult because, you know, you're doing the most internal work and you're doing it while you're moving, mm -hmm. right? Um, but other people will say, you know, Tai Chi is the most difficult mm -hmm. because it requires that you do everything with total softness. Mm. you know and other people will say you know that xing is the most difficult because you have to become soft without losing your external strength yeah. and i think that's just a question of which one you find the most difficult yeah. right but on a personal level yeah like you said i mean that there is this point where they all meet because and that's why it's you know ne jia chuan right that the, they're all mm. considered one thing because essentially they all come down to you got to move, be aware of your movement and do stuff with your insides, you know, and kind of like what that is, is they kind of have a different you know, way of doing it. But like, they're all essentially going for that same type of thing. Right. And <clears throat> Tai Chi, I mean, it to me is the most, um, classical right like mm. the way i always explain that you know when people ask me well, what's the difference between shingy tai chi and bago and i'm a musician so i always think of it real simple shingy is the blues it's raw it's old it's simple but it but it but it gets 
to the core of what music is all about. It makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, you know, it, like it gets, it grabs you, you know, um, Tai Chi is classical music. It's complicated. It's mm. organized. It's, mm -hmm. You have to do it the way it's supposed mm -hmm. to be done. Mm -hmm. Then once you do that, you can improvise, right? Mm -hmm. And Bagua is jazz. You start with improv improvisation and that then becomes a form, mm. right? That the, the energies inside of you create the exact way that you do the form. That's why everybody does Bagua differently. It doesn't quite look the same mm. from school. And that's school. okay. <laughs> Whereas in Tai Chi, <laughs> the notes are written exactly as Bach yeah. wrote them. So yeah. you've got and to follow them precisely. People tend to go through a progression, I think, if you do, if you do all three. If you do one of them, then it just your art tends to change and that's kind of normal. But frequently people will get, you know, that start off doing a lot of Bagua, but also do Tai Chi will later in life move more towards Tai Chi because your body just ages and it's just kind of more what you want. You know, it's not it's not about ability. It's about like your body craving something else, you know, and um Bruce talks about how Leo Hung Jae kind of had this thing of, you know, which one do you practice, right? And if he was feeling too, you know, energetic, mm. or not too energetic, but like a little aggro and kind of like, ugh, he would practice Tai Chi. If he was feeling a little down and slumpy, he'd, you know, practice Xing Yi or Bagua. And it was just kind of that thing of like, they do different things. And so you can use them as, different tools and and kind of access different parts of this internal you know business and i've always found that you know shingy was for me the the quickest way to access it you know if i just want to get like a quick shot you know i do five minutes of shingy you know five minutes of santi and i can kind of get in touch with that thing if i really want to like chill myself out and just kind of mellow out like I'll do a long form because it's just part of that way that it just stretches you out and you have to put your mind ahead of what you're doing a little mm. bit because you got to know what move is coming. Right. What's next. Right. But you also got to stay in your body where with, with Bagua, it's that's like, that's where you just want to lose yourself in it and you don't mm. want to have any thought and you just kind of want to like, let the circles move you you know let and the it, fire take over or the earth take over or heaven take over yeah and and you know so for me bagua is kind of the meditative one right it's mm. like and that's why i think bruce puts it at that higher level because mm. he considers the meditative part of mar of the internal martial arts to be the highest level mm -hmm. not the fighting part of it which sure. you know and by far, I would say the most difficult to fight with is Tai Chi. I mean, because like to purely use Tai Chi and not add other stuff into it, because when you you're confronted with danger, it's really hard to mm. like stay in that, you know, complete softness, you know, and not just want to get the fuck out of the way or, you know, hit the Let's person. Go with your natural reaction first. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Looking, I wanted to look at a few of my notes here from the Internal Arts Fighting Applications Workshop. Hey folks, hope you enjoyed the episode. If you want to hear the rest of it, where we discuss what we did in the workshop, you can join the Patreon. Uh, there's also interviews. Like I said before, there's going to be the interview with Bruce uh, coming out this week. So that's a big one, uh, as well as uh, prior interviews we've done and other things. So check that out. Um, also, check out the Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Uh, give us some likes and all that jazz. So I want to wish everybody a happy new year. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your support. And take care of yourselves.